Welcome to the highlights of the third day's play in the second test between the Windies and England. The action coming to you from North Sound in Antigua. Coming into day three, the pitch had shown great signs of wear and tear. The foot marks were apparent and the top started to become loose. So it would be another challenging day for batsmen. And the Windies were well positioned in the test match. They were 272 for six. They were 85 runs ahead with uh, Jason Holder and Darren Bravo at the crease. In the commentary box, Darren Ganga and Nasser Hussain. Absolutely crucial third day here in this test series. Remember, England are 1 0 down and they're already 85 runs behind in this second test of three. So if England don't have a good day today, I feel that the West Indies could wrap up the series. But one thing that England will realize that at the moment, West Indies are batting last on a very difficult surface. And if they can have a good day, leave the West Indies maybe chasing 150 in the last innings, there's still plenty to play for. It has been fabulous watching an average test match pitch, but it has been very watchable. Two slips and a little bit of a gap. So the second and a fourth slip for England. Let's see if Broad can produce what he did yesterday. Both teams are wearing black armbands. That's in uh, respect of our Zari Joseph's mum. Passed away overnight. Oh, yes, beauty. Beauty from Anderson, who's bowled well this morning. That one just bounced a little. Left Jason Holder. England's first of the morning. Yeah, we sort of saw this coming. He'd been past the bat a number of times. And it gets it right this time. A little bit of extra bounce. And outside edge taken. He's looked a lot more switched on this morning, Jimmy Anderson. Pulled a little bit more zip and gets the reward. Jason Holder goes for 22. It's 281 for seven. Kima Roach comes to the crease. Beats the widest of those catches. So there are four men catching. That thick outside edge beats the widest of them, Rory Burns. And West Indies lead now goes to 100. Just managed to keep it down and wide. The last slip. Oh, good catch. That went quickly. Stokes is the man at second slip. Anderson has his second of the morning. This was an excellent catch. Yes, we've seen a few put down in the slips there, but Ben Stokes makes no mistake. Another wicket for Jimmy Anderson. Kimar Roach having a go at this one, as if he was trying to hit it over cover. And safe hands of Ben Stokes. Make sure that he's got to be on his way. So Roach goes for six. West Indies now 289 for it. Ooh, what a shot. Fantastic strike from Alzari Joseph. Well, there's a batsman with a clear mind. He's just over picks here, Jimmy Anderson. Big tall man, he just eases forward and knocks it straight back over the bowler's head. Yes. And he strikes first ball. Very, very good catch, low down. Hanging on to one. 
really good for England and, and superb for Ben Stokes. Rory Burns in that slip quarter. Good catch. Thick outside edge and diving away. Low to his right. Stokes gets his second wicket. Joseph goals for seven. It's 298 for nine. Down the ground, straight as a die. Goes for four. Excellent shot. Pardon me, he's got even more of it. It's gone for six. He goes to 49. West Indies past 300. Well, real method from turning down that single, a long single. Leave it to me. And now Joe Root has got something to think about. Because he's left the field back and if he wants here, Bravo, he can get a single. That will be 50 for Darren Bravo. Very, very important personal milestone, but more importantly, it's an innings around which the team has been able to build. Yeah. He was a man who looked completely out of nick, short of match practice in Barbados. Not easy to come to a surface like this and perform the way he has. Yeah. That's the end of that. Came down looking for that single off the last ball of the over to retain strike and spin and bounce from Moen Ali. But a wonderful effort from Darren Bravo and from the West Indies on this surface. A lead of 119. Yeah, very well played indeed. Moen saw him coming, fired it in. Good work from Johnny Bairstow as well. Plenty of time with the gloves on. He's got to concentrate on batting at number three. Moen ends with three foot. There's a bit of spin there for him. But that is an excellent effort from the Windies and an excellent effort from Darren Bravo. 50 exactly in 216 deliveries. 306 all out. Now over to England's batsmen. The Windies bowlers, a good effort from Stuart Broad, understated. A number of times he went past the bat, Ben Stokes as well, again bowling with great heart and perseverance and skill. Nothing to be ashamed of, let down by the fielders on a couple of occasions. But boy, have they got some work ahead of them now, England. The West Indies finally bowled out for 306. They added 34 in the morning session and lost their last four wickets. The top score coming to Darren Bravo, the only 50 of the innings, but several other batsmen got starts, but you won't blame them in difficult conditions against excellent seam bowling. And the superb bowling was led by Stuart Broad, who could have had five or six wickets, finished with three for 53. Jimmy Anderson joined in with two for 73 and three wickets as well for the off-spinner Moen Ali. It meant that the Windies had a lead of 119. Fans have been hoping for something special all the way from Barbados to Antigua. So, so the approach then, the approach of England's batsmen would, would emphasize what? Play the way that suits your game. So if I'm Denley or Burns or Root, look at the way Bravo batted. Over my dead body, I am not giving it away. But if I'm Bairstow, if I'm Stokes, if I'm Butler, runs are important here. Getting a lead is important. It's not just occupying the crease. So they may, if someone in this England side smashes an 80, then it gets them back into the game. But play your way. It's not going to be easy. And put to bed the ball before. That's what West Indies did really well. There were balls that exploded. There were balls that kept low. But they forgot about it and played the next delivery that came down. Easy to say, hard to do. Kimar Roach from the Sir Andy Roberts end. 
will go round the wicket immediately as he customarily does to the left-handed batters. I think the other thing is run. You get bat on it with this attacking feel, run like it's a T20 game or a 50 over contest. Especially with this outfield, it's so slow. Some parts of the world, 119 leads, say at Lords or somewhere where the outfield is lightning, you can get off to a flyer. Going to have to run well here, drop and run, be busy. England won't complain about that at all. Five on the scoreboard without a legitimate delivery registered. That'll help. It's the deficit down. Steve Harmison here commentating for Talk Sport. Say no more. <laughs> for those too young to remember, educate them. <laughs> I just don't want him to hit me, to be honest. I'll protect you. I'll stand in between. Yeah, Harmison on an Ashes tour, bold his first delivery of the Ashes tour to his mate Flintoff at second slip. Roach is back, back on target. So just seeing deliveries like that, you know if you get that a bit fuller on this pitch and it rears up off a length as Root got, as various players have got, you're going to suffer pain could get you out but this is about a physical threat as well as a mental challenge yep, there we go there we go clear the next one then with a uh, great confidence yeah holder wants one more fielder he's got three slips a gully a short leg you could argue after the event can you have a leg gully that's another bouncer. That's something you just don't get in county cricket. So it's fingers crossed when you select anyone at this level. Can they play the short stuff? Just hobbled in, Shimron Hetmeyer, I think it is before the ball was released, took half a step forward. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, Piper. always wants it it's Dorich holders looking at Dorich and Dorich I think says there's some doubt to it yeah it didn't quite feel right it's bounced quite a bit from that end Dorich himself got a few that was bouncing over the top even from quite a full length it's been bouncing that end may have just been gear yeah, going down going down good decision excellent decision not to review Four overs negotiated without any loss. And a welcome lunch for the opening batsmen. It's not been easy. It's not going to be easy for long periods. But a morning in which England picked up four for 34 and now have gone to lunch at nine without loss. There'll be small measure of respite for 40 minutes. But uh, the Windies will come back even harder after the interval. Just four overs faced by England heading into the luncheon interval. They got to nine without loss. There were one or two moments of indecisiveness and scary moments as the ball seemed and bounced. Roach and Gabriel were the guys used for a couple of overs apiece. It meant that at the luncheon interval, England was still trailing by 110. Uh, 
Finally pulls again in the air. Should be taken. No, oh, it's down. Moment of good fortune for Denley in his second innings in Test cricket. Gabriel can't believe it. It's Brathwaite down at fine leg who's put down the chance. It's very rare to see an opening batsman in that fine leg position. Craig Brathwaite took a long time to get in position to take this catch. Never really looked confident. In the end, he misjudged it, went through the fingers. It was a little bit short. He had a long time to judge, to settle. Couldn't hold on in the end. Look at the frustration there. Shannon Gabriel knows that was an easy opportunity going a begging. Beats fine leg, Kimar Roach just off his line. And England moved to 21 for none. More importantly, reduces the lead to under 100. Nice, useful partnership developing here between these two. That's a strong area, in my estimation. It's a good shot. Terrific shot from Joe Denley. Got to keep your composure as an opening batsman when a fast bowler is all over you. The ball is new, the pitch is uneven. Played that beautifully away behind square. Denley has played a lot of white ball cricket and T20 cricket in particular in recent times. So he will know how to be on the offensive. This innings might require him to take that side of his game out. Executes wonderful mana behind point. Gorgeous shot. There was a lovely balance in the shot through mid-wicket that went for two. Very powerfully through, extra cover. And these two have adopted a very positive attitude. This is just an example of that. Slightly overpitched and then the perfect balance just strokes it. Through cover. Oh, and he's just guided it straight into the hands of Slip. Holder strikes with his first ball of the spell. Burns has gone for 16. Mental error from Rory Burns. Likes to play that shot. Normally goes a lot harder at it. Slices it over the slips. This one maybe a little bit too close to him. Tries to cut it away and... John Campbell takes a comfortable catch. Just what the doctor ordered for the West Indies. England's first wicket goes down. It's Rory Burns has gone for 16. It's 35 for one. Mental error from Rory Burns means Johnny Bairstow makes his way out. To the middle to join Joe Denley. Real challenge this for Bairstow, who's been keeping for a long, long time in sapping conditions. Neck and crop, Jason Holder again. He is a champion. If he's not doing it with the bat, he's doing it with the ball for the West Indies. Everything right from Johnny Bairstow, he's just missed it. Full length ball on the drive, shake of the head. Full up. Takes a big drive and it hits the top of off. That's a place to ball. Hit the top of off if you can. You'll watch this many times, Johnny Bairstow. How's he missed it? Bairstow has gone for 14. England are 49 for two. will be trying to take root on a very very difficult surface here's Joe looking to get a significant score in this series 
there'd be no better time to get it than now. Beautifully bold. Zari didn't want anything to do with it, but Jason Holders reviewed it. Edge, mate, when I when you get a chance, so that'll be my friend here, I think. Ultra Edge coming. Yeah, there's a clear spike. It's just clip. Looks like the bottom of the glove there, Chris. Um, so I'll be coming back to you on field. Uh, there's Chris, you're on field now. Can you give that? Out? Thank you. Great review by Jason Holder. You saw in the replay, Alzari Joseph just turned and went back to his mark while he was heading back. But Holder has been excellent once again. Well, he doesn't think so. Joe Root has gone off in disbelief. Ball is not interested. The surface of the pitch is disturbed as it rips back in at Joe Root. Huge appeal from behind the wicket, nothing from the bowler. Reviewed immediately. Great review. Joe Root doesn't think so. He's gone for seven. 56 for three. Root dismissed for seven. So Butler in at number five. from the young man for obvious reasons he's had a traumatic 24 hours but the local lad has produced the goods when it counts wide of the crease creating an angle and nipping it back in top of off thank you very much makes bowling look very very easy Outstanding from the local lad. Then Lee's gone, 59 for four. towards Ben Stokes and once again there is no reaction from Alzari Joseph not this time run out of time they all charged this time was it the back leg was it the edge Beautiful delivery again from Alzari Joseph, pushing it across Ben Stokes, just flicked the back leg, and that was the sound that Holder heard. He has fired up West Indies captain. Huge moment in the game, John Campbell, third slip, Ben Stokes, second ball has been put down. They have caught so well in the series. What a spell this young man is producing here. Outstanding bowling, back leg, very next delivery, outside edge. Absolute beauty going across the left-hander, opens him up. One job to do, catch it puts it down crunching drive from Joss Butler 
this is the game arguably the series right here this little bit to tee and just after tee that's why that drop was so vital these two can do some damage they're not going to score slowly you bowl a bad ball they're going to put it away can you survive this delivery he does and that uh, ends an excellent session tremendous stuff both from West Indies change bowlers Jason Holder and Alzari Joseph who took four wickets between them and Butler and Stokes managed to in the end get through to T douse that fire albeit with a bit of luck when Stokes was put down second ball by John Campbell four wickets went in the session England trail by 44 another session of this third day to come and it should be another session of great cricket at the England were reduced to 75 for four three batsmen getting into double figures but the vagaries of the pitch but to a larger extent the skill of the West Indies bowlers proving too much in that session Holder and Joseph were the men to cause the damage, some unplayable deliveries sequentially in that session from uh, both of uh, these superb performers. It meant that England was still trailing by 44 runs. Not a bad start back up a good length shot of authority from Stokes it's a bit too much room from Kirmar Roj Nice control in that shot. It's timed so beautifully from Joss Butler. Always maintain he's the best timer of a cricket ball in this England team. There we go. See that he started to lose a bit of patience. Ben Stokes, full of delivery. And this one takes the inside edge onto the stumps. Roach strikes. And this could be a very telling blow. Ben Stokes, dangerous player. And he's got to depart now. And here's how it happened. Full delivery, trying to drive quite to the pitch and inside edge onto his stumps more frustration Ben Stokes and England in deep problems now fifth wicket goes down and brings Moin Ali to the crease at 88 for five that is a half volley that is too full and uh, dealt with nicely by Butler. Well, he selected well, Joss Butler, and everything in perfect order as he goes after this one. Rank half volley, and put away with a lot of power. Again, that exquisite timing. Full delivery 
online where the batsman had to play. And uh, this one didn't straighten, came straight through the gate, took the pad and the off stump. Jubilation in the stands. As Moin Ali goes for four and England are now 96 for six. Pulled away by Folks. Convincingly so this time over mid wicket for four. Good shot, well watched. Didn't commit himself onto the front foot, had enough time to swivel on this one. Got it off the middle of the bat. It was a fair way outside the line of the off stump. There was length on that delivery, which allowed him to play this shot. Just got to keep control, Roach, though. He's given folks a short ball that he's pulled for four and now a, a looping half volley that he's drilled straight back down the ground. Two good shots, but uh, two not very good deliveries. Again, having to make the adjustment to the right-hander. Loves bowling to the left-handers. Going a little too full, too wide not seen him get the type of lateral movement that we've seen him get against the left-handers hits it powerfully it's Alzari Al Joseph at mid-off who half stopped it but such was the power from the drive off Joss Butler's bat it's gone to the fence He's done well so far. Smart club in this innings. Going into 20 now. 43 deliveries. Four boundaries in his innings. Butler becomes the top scorer in this England second innings with just 20. And make that 24. Last two overs, we've seen four loose balls from Roach and Holder. Two that have gone to the fence off Roach. Two now in this over from Holder. And England trail by just five. Over pitched a little too straight. He needs, uh, can't afford to lose uh, the approach, which has worked well for them. Being disciplined, bowling outside the off stump on that off stump line, maintaining a good length. What he doesn't want to do is bowl a leg stump half volley. I think what's important here for West Indies, both the captain and the bowlers, is to put the match situation out of their mind. Get a bit tense when it gets to this stage of a game, with England trailing by just one. They'll be in the lead in a minute, and albeit six wickets down. Everybody starts to look at the scoreboard and starts to think about the end result. Put that out of your mind and try and get back to the basics and the discipline that West Indies have shown all throughout this series. Big shout, height is the issue. Gaffney the umpire and Holder reviews. Series, to Chris, Holder. Chris, we've got three reds. And uh, once again, he has called an excellent your review. Decision to out, you're on screen now. Excellent review from West Indies captain. Umpire Gaffney has to overturn his original decision. The in-swinger for Roach has done for a right-hander this time. Mainly the left-handers who've fallen to Roach, but it's folks, the right-hander, who's gone now. England trail by one, seven down. Appreciable inward movement there from uh, Kima Roach. He was confident. His captain backed him. Ben Folks uh, going for 13. It's 118 for seven now. He likes it, given. 
given and Butler must review height is the issue here surely Thank you. There's again, there's clearly no bat involved there, so I'm happy to go to ball tracking when you've got that. Ball, ball tracking coming now. Uh, impact is in line, Kuma, and hitting the wickets umpire's call. So you'll be staying with your decision. Uh, you are what a moment on the screen that is. now. The dangerous Stay with your decision. Given as out well. on yes. the field by umpire Dharma Sena, and that was the key thing because Hawkeye showing that it was an umpire's call DRS review, but because it was given out by Dharma Sena, it stays out. Butler got in a tangle. Bat tucked in behind his pad. He couldn't get at the ball. And he now goes, and England still trail by one. It's England's top scorer in this second innings. A lot of hopes were pinned on him. Getting England a good lead. He's gone for 24. The end is nine, 118 for eight now. Oh, surely close. Broad was a long way back, a long way across. You could see what Holder was trying to do. Leg by signal. Going down. Like still on leg stump. Didn't waste the review, Jason Holder. He's been very good in using the reviews. Scores a level. And that's the way he will try and play. Drives and drives sweetly. England will need his batting come to the fore in this situation doesn't look hopeful for them but they've still got to represent in the situation hasn't been that effective with the ball Sam Curran oh close Broad is across he's in front of the stumps Gaffney gives him out it looks stone dead Windies they're not worried at all they're smiling, they're already celebrating. Stuart Broad will have a conversation with Sam Curran, his partner. Turns and leaves. It was adjacent. Pitched in line. Would have probably hit middle stump. Maybe middle and leg. It was a long way across, wasn't he, Stuart Broad, and a long way back. And Kimar Roach, what a series he is having. England's six left-handers have been grist to his mill. He's seen the back of another. He's got Stuart Broad, LBW, and another left-hander now will be coming in with England's lead, just six. Slower ball. Slower ball. I reckon if it doesn't go for four, it does. Curran is looking to come back for three there and keep the strike. Off cutter, isn't it, or off spinner? Jimmy was just wandering out of his crease. Yeah, trying to bowl one of those cutters that dip. Did dip a fraction, but not enough. Chipped up in the air. And is it carried? I think it has. What a beautiful slow ball. What a fine catch that is. Diving forward. And England have been bowled out. Alzari Joseph diving forward. An exceptional catch. 132 all out. West Indies need 14 to win. Well, England have been obliterated here. Clever bowling, the threat of the fast bouncing ball. Looks to be a slow delivery. Jimmy Anderson early on the strike. Joseph comes in, very athletic, and takes the catch, which ends England's innings. Captain Holder 
he finishes with four for Roach four for. England bowled out cheaply once again in the just over 42 overs for 132. Very, very disappointing for a batting lineup with uh, such depth. 24, the top score for Joss Butler. A number of batsmen getting into double figures. No one able to carry on against some high quality bowling. And speaking of that quality, it was led once again by Kimai Roach, four for 52. He really has become a very canny and skillful bowler, even at reduced pace. Four wickets as well to Jason Holder, who continues to prove himself to be one of the finest, if not the finest all-rounder in the test game at this point, and a couple of wickets for Alzari Joseph. It meant that the Windies would need 14 runs to win the test match and the series. Well, the target is simple. It's 14 and a chance to create history for the Windies. And it's that man Anderson again, yet again, having to bowl. Nothing you say about England's batting it has been cruel on England's bowling. Not keeping them out of the dirt long enough. Campbell strikes me as someone that will want to do this in a hurry. Brathwaite will play normally. Campbell might pick up his bat and whack it. Three slips and a gully, and it's Anderson again for England. And they'll start. I reckon that will start with a boundary. It does. Goes away. Pro man, Jimmy Anderson. This ball's that delivery will be bitterly disappointed with the performance. He even went on to social media himself after Barbados and just said, just not good enough, sorry. Flashed hard and away for four. One hit away now, the Windies. Well, a team that's emerging, you would say. Good potent attack with other players, notably Thomas, young Thomas, fast bowler, ready to come in. He wasn't ready there. He wasn't ready. Broad and Anderson just won this done and dusted. Cover was running in. Campbell was looking at his feet. They have a ball, broad, appealing, pleading with the umpire. He wants a review, and Root has said, go on then, Stuart. That was a review, was it, Chris? Yeah. The original decision was not out. Okay, that's gone close to the bat, so if I can check ultra edge, please. Yep, okay, I'm satisfied there's no bat involved, so if we can go to ball tracking. Uh, Chris impact is umpire's call and missing the wickets, so your original decision was not out, so you're staying with your not out decision. You are on screen now. Not a lot going for it, that. England have lost a review. <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to be that important, Dave Ladd. Hit away, and what a way to do it in Caribbean style. Smashed away for six. What a win for a proud cricketing nation. They have outbatted, outbowled, outthought England. It has been some time coming, but the smiles have been brought back, and even the great man stands and applauds. A great cricketing nation has seen a great cricketing win. Wonderful performance from the Windies. And what about that? Finish it in style. Smack it over deep mid-wicket for six. Ended very, very quickly. It proved to be too easy for the Windies. They knocked off the runs required, finishing with 17 without loss in just 2.1 overs. Brathwaite and Campbell doing the job.
no success for Anderson and Broad, uh, two elder statesmen who bowled with great heart and uh, commitment throughout this test match. The player of the match award went to Kimar Roach, eight wickets in the test match after his five wicket haul in the first test of the series, justly deserved. To just to refresh the minds of how this match unfolded, the Windies won the toss, bowled out England for 187, and then committed themselves with the bat for 306, and then rolled over England once again for 132, closing things off with 17 without loss and winning by 10 wickets. Hope you've enjoyed all the action from the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium. Until next time, bye for now.